Wow, it is Sunday. Sunday is my favorite day. Can't you guess why? It is because I get to spend an amazing time with God and my church family. Fun time in church starts with praising our Father, God. So let us pray. Close your eyes as we pray. Father, we thank you for being the best Father ever. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your spirit. Please accept our praise and our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready, Sirac?
Worship. You can close your eyes, 
lift your hands or bow your knees. Whatever you do, just keep your heart connected to God's heart. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his Trembles at his voice
Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have planned for us to learn today. We open our hearts to you. Teach us and help us practice what we learn in your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, children. Good morning to you and your friend or your sister or your cousin or your brother. How many of you invited someone today to Sunday school? How many? Who? You know, we talked about it last two weeks, and we talked about it last week, right? Invite someone. Yes, I know you guys visit your cousins and your relations. Why not tell them about Sea Rock Sunday service so that you can sit together and learn at the feet of Jesus? I am super excited. Who is super excited like me? The Bible says, I was glad whenever they tell me to go into the house of the Lord. So every Sunday, we should be excited to come here to praise God and to learn about Jesus. Okay, let's get in the mood right now. But before we go on, let's do our check, our five list. Do you remember? How many of you have it all together? Number one, our Bibles. Check. Your fresh fire. Check. Number three, your notebook or your journal. Which one do you have? Check. Number four, your pen or your pencil to take down notes. Check. And number five, your Jesus money, your offering. Who has it? Do you have the five items? Give yourself a thumbs up. You are doing amazing. And we still have copies of Fresh Fire in the church. Just in case you still don't have it, you can tell your mommy or your daddy. They will come over to church and get a copy for you. Great. So let's dig in. I know most of you are at home. You're going to different centers for summer school. You're having so much fun visiting. That's good. You should be in a good mood this period because it's summer. But let's not forget what we learn every Sunday. Who can tell me what we learned last week? What did we learn? What's our theme for this month? Okay, our theme for this month is trust God. Trust God. And last week, we learned about reach out. When you trust God, you have to show it by reaching out. When do we reach out? What did we learn last week? You can reach out by praying when you are worried, when you are in need, or you are sad, or you are sick, like the woman we read about. She was seriously ill, seriously sick for 12 good years. Wow. And she survived it. How many of us have been ill like her? We know we don't feel good, right? So whenever you feel ill or anyone around you, you can trust God by praying and watch how Jesus will heal them completely, silently, and speedily. Good. Now this week, we are going to learn another interesting lesson. It's titled, Trust God, Will He Come? Hmm, what does that mean? When we are trusting God and we reach out or we pray, do you think He will show up? Yes, He will, because we learned that trust means the person is reliable, the person is dependable. Jesus is always trustworthy to do what he promises to do. And he has told us that he would always, always be with us. He would take care of us and he loves us so much. So we should trust him. Will he come? Yes, he would. We're going to start by looking at this picture right here. Who's this? Who's this man? And who is he holding? Can you guess? Let me help you out. His name is Jairus. 
Jairus is one of the rulers in the synagogue and he's lying there at the feet of Jesus. How come? I thought the synagogue rulers do not like Jesus. So how come Jairus is at his feet? What's he doing there? He's not supposed to be a Jesus' friend, right? Let's find out. And we'll find out the story in the book of Luke chapter 8. So we will read from verse 41 to 42 to get to the root of the story. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. He bowed down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. Really? Why? Jairus had only one daughter. She was 12 years old and she was dying. Dying? Oh my! Jairus must be really sad, watching his daughter sick, shaking, and almost going. Oh, she's dying. That's really sad. So I guess he must have been desperate, and now he doesn't care what anyone thinks. He doesn't care if the other rulers are upset that he's going to Jesus because he knows, and he has heard several testimonies about people Jesus healed. So he had to rush quickly was pushing his way through the crowd just to get to Jesus. And when he gets there, he humbled himself. He didn't say, he's not my friend, so I'm, going to, I'm not going to ask for help. He knows that Jesus can help him. What is that? Trust. He trusts that Jesus can actually save his daughter from dying. So he quickly lay down at his feet and held his leg. And he was begging, Jesus, please, please come to my house, please. What do you think Jesus did? Did he say, oh no, I thought we are not friends, so why are you holding my feet? No, Jesus is trustworthy. That means he is a good person. He will not let anyone be hurt. So when Jesus saw him holding his feet, I'm sure he must have asked, what is the problem? And the man said, please come to my house. My daughter is sick. She's at the brink of dying. I am desperate. Can you please come? Jesus did not say, wait, let me finish my lesson. I have to finish what I'm teaching these people. No, Jesus knows that he has to come to his rescue. And he followed him immediately. How amazing. Now, Jesus is so kind, super amazing. And as he was going, guess what? Something happened. As Jesus heard his request, what Jairus was saying, he started moving immediately, but that was the exact time the sick woman came to touch Jesus' garment. She touched it. I remember what we learned last week. Jesus knew, even though there were so many people, he knew that something has happened to him, that someone has touched him. And he stopped and he asked, who touched me? The disciples were amazed. How can you be asking that kind of question? With so many people here, everyone is pushing at you, trying to get close, trying to hear from you. How do you think you would know who touched you? Everybody has been touching. He said, no, I know someone touched me. Because immediately the woman touched his garment. What happened? We learned last week that immediately she was whole, she was well. So the anointing has moved from Jesus' body. So he knew and he stopped. That was when he saw the woman and he spoke to her, rise, your faith has made you whole. She was well. Guess what Jairus must be feeling at that time? Because he's in a hurry. He needs to get home so that Jesus will heal his daughter. Did he say, Jesus, stop, don't do that. Please attend to me. Let's go leave her. He didn't say that. That's how you show you trust someone. Be patient. Trust that Jesus knows what he was doing. So he stood and he waited. So while Jesus was talking to the woman, something awful happened. Some messengers from Jairus' house rushed down and they came to him. With a sad face, you would know. You can guess what must have happened. Some of them were crying. Most of them were sad. And they were like, Master, your daughter is dead. Oh no. What do you think happened? The general said, it's your fault, Jesus, it's your fault. You said you were going to come with me, now you wasted time and my daughter is dead. He didn't do that. He didn't do all that. 
He knows that if Jesus was able to heal the woman that had illness for 12 years, if Jesus has done several testimonies he's heard, he knows that Jesus can raise his daughter again. He was just waiting patiently for Jesus to respond to what they heard. And Jesus just finished talking to the woman because to Jesus, everyone is important. Everyone. As Jesus cares about Jairus' baby girl, that's how Jesus cares about this other woman because the woman is Jesus' baby as well. You and I, we are Jesus' children. The same way your mommy loves you, she loves your brother, she loves your sister, that's how Jesus loves everyone equally. So he had to attend to the woman so she'll be fine. And then he told Jairus, do not be afraid, your daughter will be well again. Wow, let's see how that happens. We'll continue. But then, as they were going, Jesus says, come, your daughter will be fine. They got to the house, and Jesus looked at the child. She was sleeping in his mind, because Jesus knows that to him, death is like sleeping. But everyone was wailing in the house. Ah, she's gone, ah, she's dead. Ah. I'm sure some people would even be surprised in their tears seeing Jesus. This man is not a friend to the rulers of the synagogue. What is he doing in this house? Why some of them will be excited. I know this man can do something. I've seen a lot of things he has done. So as Jesus walked in, he went straight to the room, saw the girl lying there, and he said, my child, stand up by the voice of Jesus. A lot of things happen, amazing things happen. As he said that, guess what? Immediately, the girl woke up and stood up. So Jesus called in Jairus, take your daughter and take care of her. Everyone had been waiting for Jesus. And when he came back, a crowd was there to welcome him. Just then, the man in charge of the Jewish meeting place came and knelt down in front of Jesus. His name was Jairus, and he begged Jesus to come to his home because his 12-year-old child was dying. She was his only daughter. While Jesus was speaking, someone came from Jairus' home and said, Your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher anymore? When Jesus heard this, he told Jairus, Don't worry. Have faith and your daughter will get well. Jesus went into the house, but he did not let anyone else go with him, except Peter, John, James, and the girl's father and mother. Everyone was crying and weeping for the girl, but Jesus said, the child isn't dead, she is just asleep. The people laughed at him because they knew she was dead. Jesus took hold of the girl's hand and said, child, get up. She came back to life and got right up. Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were surprised, but Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were surprised, but Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Isn't that amazing? Have you ever heard that someone was dead and stood up again? It happened in the Bible and some of it, these testimonies are actually happening. But only one person can do this. That's God. So we have to trust God to take care of us when we are sick. To trust God to do amazing miracles. Whatever we are trusting Him to do, just reach out and know that he will come. Our lesson is, will he come? And by the end of our story, we know the answer, right? Yes, he will come. He would always show up. He will always, always be there for you and I, because Jesus is trustworthy. Jesus is reliable. Jesus never fails. Amazing truths of God. You should always know that. So before we go ahead, we have to do a review of what we learned. What did we learn? Only one person could help Jairus' his daughter. From this picture we can see, Jairus was desperate and he was thinking, what would everybody say? 
Who would everybody say they find me going to Jesus? But because he was desperate, he knew only one person can help him, and that's Jesus. So he rushed down to Jesus. Getting at his feet, he humbled himself. He trusted him. He knew that Jesus would be able to help him, and he begged desperately. And what did Jesus do? Jesus responded. Jesus went immediately. So trust him to show up at the right time. So even when the people came with their news crying and wailing, Jairus decided to still trust God. From the beginning of this month, we've been learning how to trust God even at difficult times. Abraham and Sarai, they didn't have children for many, many years. And God kept giving them instruction and they kept trusting God. Did they get a child? Yes. And they got many, many generations through that child. Just like you and I. We keep singing, right? We have children of Father Abraham. The last week's lesson, the woman has been sick for not just one day, one week, one month, one year, two years, three years, up to 12 years. She didn't give up. She kept saying that song. We learned last week, you are the one that heals me. You are the one that heals me. She kept saying it to herself and trusting God. Then one day she heard that Jesus was passing by. Even as weak as she was, she struggled, she crawled, she tried to reach out. And then she touched him, knowing that if only she can reach, even if it's the garment, the hem, the bottom of his clothes, she knows that she will receive her healing. Did she receive it? Yes! And now this week, Jairus' daughter was about dying. He didn't think about what anyone was saying. He was desperate. And he found his way through the crowd and went to Jesus. Jesus was going with him immediately, but then Jesus stopped along the way to talk to the other woman. And within that time, he was talking to the sick woman. Jairus' daughter died. Did he lose his trust? No. He kept trusting God. And did his daughter rise again? Jesus healed her and now she's alive. She was alive and the man was happy. There was a ruler of the synagogue named Jairus. His 12-year-old daughter was sick and very near death. Jairus went to Jesus and begged him to come to his house and heal his daughter. As they walked to Jairus' house, the crowd pressed in on Jesus. In that crowd was a woman who had a disease that made her bleed for 12 years. No one had ever been able to help her. She touched Jesus and was healed instantly. Jesus asked, Who touched me? Peter, his disciple, said, The crowd is all around you. They are the ones who touched you. But Jesus said, I know that power has gone out from me. Reluctantly, the woman told Jesus that she had touched him. Jesus said, Go in peace. Your faith has healed you. On the way to Jairus' house, a messenger said that Jairus' daughter had died. Jesus said, just believe, your daughter will be healed. At the house, Jesus went into the room with the girl. Jesus grabbed the little girl's hand and said, Little girl, get up. Immediately, her spirit returned and she got up. Her parents were amazed. What should we learn from this lesson? That you should never, never be moved by whatever you're going through. Your faith should not shake. You should trust Jesus. Trust Jesus that no matter what it is, just like Jairus did, just like the woman with the issue of blood did, just like Abraham, trust God. Whatever the experience, you will get miracle. As long as you call on God, you reach out. All right? Yay! So now, your assignment is for you to read through this review and color the pictures. All right? Good job. Okay, right now we're going to stand up like Jesus' soldiers. Put your right hand on your chest as we take our life application. Are you ready? Okay, so you repeat after me. I will trust in Jesus. Say that again. I will trust in Jesus. Number two, I will wait patiently for God to act. I will always, always try to wait for God to act. And the third one, 
God can be trusted. Yes, amazing, right? We should be patient. It's not just trusting God, knowing the meaning of trust, believing in Him, reaching out, be patient. Some of us, when we ask for things, like you ask your mommy for things, and you think you'll get it right now, they have to plan. Our parents are always planning. They make budgets. They make schedule for getting different stuff. So they may not get what you're asking for immediately. The same way you learn eventually to be patient. That's how you ought to be patient with our maker. When you pray to him, just know he would answer at the right time because he sees us all. He created us. He knows our ending even from the beginning. He knows what is good for us at every point in time. So trust him, reach out, be patient because God is reliable. I'm gonna run, run, run to his love, love, love. I'm gonna sing, sing, sing to God's son. I'm gonna shout, shout, shout the name of Jesus. He is the one I trust. When I'm alone, when I'm afraid, I know that He is with me every day He's by my side He hears me when I pray Jesus, I trust in Him I'm gonna run, run, run To His love, love, love I'm gonna sing, sing, sing To God's Son I'm gonna shout, shout, shout Jesus, He is the one I trust. When I'm awake, when I'm asleep, I know that He is watching over me. He keeps me safe, He loves my family. Jesus, I trust in Right now, we will take our memory verse. You should know them by now, right? Okay, our memory verse is taken from the book of Hebrew chapter 10, verse 23. And it says, Let us hold firmly to the hope that we have confessed. We can trust God to do what he promised. Let's repeat it again. Our memory verse can be found in the book of Hebrew 10, verse 23. Let us hold hope firmly to the hope that we profess. We can trust God that he will do what he promised. Amazing. Today's lesson was another eye-opener that we should not care about what anybody says when you are trusting God. Just trust him and be patient and he will come through. Let's not forget our health tips, okay? We know that COVID is still out there, so we have to be very careful wash your hands with soap and water as much as possible not just water with soap and water and if you can't reach water and soap what about your sanitizer i hope you've been using them the one you made during last summer camp on saturday yes it was an amazing time i hope you even know how to make one just in case mommy and daddy can't buy you make one so the one you have Put it in your pocket, in your bag, always carry them along just in case you can't find water. And as much as possible, avoid touching surfaces, okay? Put your hands to yourself. Must you touch the surfaces? Except you really need to. And as much as you do, 
wash your hands and don't forget social distancing what does that mean by now we all know give space don't go too close to people especially people that are not from your house even people from your house you can notice your parents when they come back from outside they don't rush at you immediately they take off their clothes take their bath wash their hands okay put on your face shield or your face mask and don't go too close to people don't worry we will beat covid because we are being careful and we have god at our side amazing all right let's put our hands together as we pray we want to pray close your eyes put your hands together let's say our prayers lord jesus i put my trust in you help me to remember that you will always show up no matter the experience in jesus name amen eyes open awesome awesome time today right i hope we enjoy today's service especially this praise and worship and we've learned something to take home for the week today right good i always look forward to the praise and worship don't you remember what we learned last month we praise god everywhere anywhere at any time and that's part of how he will show up have a fantastic week and i'll see you again next sunday bye